tropical heat was unbearable. Despite being inside a cutter with the air conditioner turned on, the Coast Guardsmen were sweating profusely. The eight-man crew had been inspecting Vietnamese sampans the whole day. The men aboard the Point White Cutter were part of Operation Market Time, a joint U.S. Navy and Coast Guard program with the objective to cleanse the rivers and coasts of South Vietnam of enemy contraband. Suddenly, a lone sampan emerged from the river, and one of the Americans shouted to stop as they approached the local vessel to inspect it. The men quickly aimed their rifles at the Vietnamese, while others prepared to board the vessel. The North Vietnamese were known to hide between civilian fishermen and take the Americans by surprise. The operation was risky, but someone had to do it. It was now time for another inspection. Naval Involvement As North Vietnam launched a series of large-scale military operations in South Vietnam to destabilize the government and take over, President Lyndon B. Johnson increased America's involvement in the war. The president soon ordered a ferocious bombing campaign against the North and approved the landing of more than 3,500 U.S. Marines in the area. What became known as the Bucklew Report gave the American advisors in Vietnam a taste of what was truly happening in the Asian country. The Communist North was committed to annihilating the South if the U.S. did not intervene. The Vung Ro Incident of March 1965, in which the Americans captured a camouflage ship carrying weapons, explosives, ammunition, and all sorts of supplies destined for the Viet Cong guerrilla, confirmed the fears of many American advisors and catapulted the participation of the U.S. Navy in Vietnam. Moreover, it was eventually found that the supplies came directly from China. This was the turning point for the United States' naval involvement in South Vietnam. Operation Market Time The flow of communist supplies into South Vietnam and the aggression of the Viet Cong were vital in transforming the U.S. Military Assistance and Advisory Group Vietnam, or MAGV, into the Military Assistance Command Vietnam Studies and Observations Group, or MACV SOG, following orders from General William Westmoreland. The general also insisted on securing and patrolling the rivers of South Vietnam with a counter-infiltration plan. As such, three task forces were set up to interdict the North Vietnamese waterborne traffic. Author Dwight John Zimmerman would write that Task Forces 116 and 117 operated on in the inland waterways of South Vietnam as the Mobile Riverine Force and the River Patrol Force, while Task Force 71 would operate as the Vietnam Patrol Force. This led to the establishment of Operation Market Time in March of 1965, with the sole objective of curbing the infiltration of communist steel-hulled trawlers into South Vietnam. The operation was born as a joint effort between the U.S. Navy and the Coast Guard, and was named after the hundreds of marketing vessels that were to be meticulously searched in the coastal waters of South Vietnam for contraband. The operation was split into three squadrons, two belonging to the Navy and one to the Coast Guard. And according to Zimmerman, quote, Navy Boat Squadron 1, operating along the coast, was composed of five divisions. Coastal Squadron 1, operating at sea, contained six divisions. Coast Guard Squadron 1 contained three divisions. Bases were located at eight sites, ranging from Da Nang in the north to An Toi on the southern tip of Pha Kok Island off the Cambodian border. Although the operation's main purpose was to stop the enemy from smuggling supplies into the south, the sailors that were part of market time also assumed secondary missions. Some of them involved providing fire support to ground units fighting near beaches, landing and extracting troops and civilians, medical civil action programs, or encircling enemy units near the coasts or large rivers. Swift Boats and Cutters To perform their duties effectively, the Navy and Coast Guard personnel operated a variety of different surface vessels and aircraft. In his book, War in the Shallows, author John Darrell Sherwood recounts how the first inshore boats used by the Coast Guard were Coast Guard Point Class WPBs, or cutters. During the first months of Operation Market Time, 
The 245-man Coast Guard force in Vietnam operated cutters that were still painted in their traditional white. The small boats were highly effective and had a powerful 50 caliber machine gun, grenade launchers, and more importantly, air conditioning for the eight-man crew. The crews were often armed with World War II-era weaponry, such as Tomkin SMGs and M1 Garands. As the war progressed, these were replaced by the standard-issue M16A1 and M16A2. Although the Coast Guard cutters were quite effective in large open areas, they lacked mobility as they pushed inland, which is where the PFCs, or patrol craft fast vessels, excelled. Also called the Swift Boats, these 50-foot-long, all-aluminum shallow draft vessels were operated by the U.S. Navy, and they penetrated into inferior waterways where the Coast Guard could not pursue Vietnamese vessels. Equipped with two 50 caliber M2 Browning MGs, an 81mm mortar, and speeds that averaged 20 to 25 knots, the Swift Boats were essential for stopping the contraband of vessels that attempted to flee from the Coast Guard. The Americans and South Vietnamese also employed gunboats, patrol air cushion vehicles or pack vs and even coastal minesweepers for deep water areas. Meanwhile, A-1 Sky Raiders and P-3 Orions were the eyes in the sky for the Navy and Coast Guard crews operating in South Vietnam. Inspections and Boardings Data gathered from the CIA and MACV estimated that prior to the launching of Operation Market Time, more than 90% of all the supplies the Viet Cong received came from the rivers of South Vietnam. However, it all changed when the Navy and the Coast Guard came in. Still, it was no easy task, as over 60,000 Vietnamese sampans and junks traveled, fished, and smuggled in a coastline that was over 1,200 miles long. According to Navy and Coast Guard reports, between 3,000 and 4,000 sampans were inspected weekly. These inspections often went beyond 13,000 people, and less than 10% of the searches resulted in detentions. Nevertheless, the Viet Cong were very keen on mixing themselves with the locals, and often surprised the Americans when they approached what appeared to be defenseless junks. Firefights and ambushes near the coast or near riverbeds were expected and to register as many vessels as possible, the Navy and Coast Guard made two types of inspections. One involved boarding a vessel suspected of contraband, but that was dangerous and tiresome. The sailors had to physically inspect the sampan, its cargo, and its crew before allowing them to resume travel. When the junk seemed harmless or posed no threat, Coast Guardsmen simply made a visual examination, asked for cargo paperwork, and continued patrolling an area. The Coast Guard often excelled at these duties because of the previous training of the crews. Meanwhile, the Guardsmen tried to go easy with the innocent civilians that were simple fishermen or sellers. As such, they did what they could to sympathize with the locals by providing medical assistance with an onboard corpsman or simply sharing food and other supplies with the population. Back to Ho Chi Minh Trail. A Coast Guard documentary released during the war begins with the voice of a sailor saying, quote, You're at sea more than 70% of your time. What a life. A sailor is then seen shouting Nong Lai, the Vietnamese word for stop, as the Coast Guard Point White Cutter approached a Vietnamese vessel for inspection. Life was often boring for the guardsmen under the tropical heat, but Operation Market Time paid off. From July of 1965 to December of 1971, the forces involved destroyed over 10 communist trawlers. After examining North Vietnamese naval records, historian Mark Moyer concluded, quote, Market time swiftly brought Hanoi's maritime infiltration operations to ruin, as if the stopper had been pulled and all of South Vietnam's coastal waters had gone down the drain. Operation Market Time was so successful that many of its assets began providing civic action and naval gunfire support. And for the remainder of the war, no large steel-hulled ships broke through the coastal waters and rivers of South Vietnam. In the aftermath of North Vietnam's Tet Offensive of 1968, the enemy had transferred most of its logistics to the Ho Chi Minh Trail. In November, General William Westmoreland praised the Navy and Coast Guard when he said, quote, 
Market Time forces have successfully blocked intrusions by sea, forcing the enemy to use the long, torturous Ho Chi Minh Trail, thus significantly affecting his ability to properly sustain his forces in the south. A Department of the Army study from the Coastal Surveillance Force later noted that, quote, In early 1966, it was estimated that the enemy accomplished three-quarters of his resupply by infiltration from the sea. By the end of 1966, this was reduced to an estimated one-tenth of the total resupply. By 1971, under Nixon's Vietnamization policy, Operation Market Time assets began to be transferred to the South Vietnamese Navy to conduct patrols. Eventually, all the seasoned Coast Guardsmen would go on to see action in their homeland when Nixon declared the war on drugs. Thank you for watching our video. Please like and subscribe to our Dark Documentaries channels to find more exciting historical and military content. And if you enjoyed our video, please share it with someone who might like it. Also, don't forget to hit the bell icon to be notified of our newest productions, and stay tuned.